Hey, what's up guys, Steven here and welcome back to another video and today it's all about the brand new released Huawei Mate 30. So while um, the device still does not sell in my country and I'm not even sure if it will sell in my country because of the stupid Trump ban. Anyhow, I had to get it from China and I got it from Trading Zhenzhen, you can find the link down below. Pretty good price and also they did an amazing job on customs clearance so usually it's 20% tax that would be worth the fees something like 250 euros but all I had to pay was just 50 euros so congratulations to you guys you are simply amazing. So today in this video we'll do a quick unpacking so this is a brand new device never opened and we'll check out if we can get the Google services on it and I will show you some alternatives on how to get apps on the device without using the Huawei store or if you want to use the Huawei store I will also go a little bit into that. But now let's just stop talking and let's jump right in. So guys here it is now the brand new Mate 30 and well if we have a closer look at the box then you can see that this here is actually a Chinese version because everything here is in Chinese. But anyhow, there isn't a difference to a European version because you get the same bands and also the European version doesn't come with a different operating system. So basically there is no difference if you buy from China or not. All right, guys, then now let's open it up here with a US Army knife. Isn't that funny? And there we go. So Mate 30 series and here at the top we have the smartphone as you can see so this should be a black version and let's quickly check it out and yeah there we go beautiful black version but let's put it beside and let's quickly check out the accessories which we can find inside the box first of all if you order from China you also get a Chinese user manual but anyhow nobody's using uh, reading the user manual anyway so let's put this beside Now, SIM opening tool and also a transparent cover, so far as I can see. Now, on the European versions of the Mate 20, the date didn't include a cover, but here if you buy a Chinese one, um, so far um, you're getting here a transparent cover, that's pretty cool. Then let's check out here the wall charger, and as you can see, this comes with the international layout here for the power socket. And it's still a Huawei supercharger, so this will work perfectly fine in your country. No worries about that. But still, you probably need to get an adapter. But Trading Shenzhen is also including plenty of stuff for your country, so um, there will be an adapter inside of the box. Then here we have um, a headset, so the Huawei headset, which looks pretty much like the Apple headset. And yeah, a Type-C cable for the supercharger, which only works for the supercharger, um, at least. With, if you want to get the full charging speeds, then you need to use the original one. And yeah, now here it is. Let's try to turn it on. Let's check if there's some juice inside of the battery. And there we go. As you can see, Huawei. And yeah, I'm really curious. It says here powered by Android. This is now the first boot. So this is really untouched. Maybe Trading Shenzhen has already installed something, but I'm not quite sure yet. So guys, the Huawei Mate 30 has now booted up and let's check it out. So as you can see, this is a really beautiful device, but I was even more <laughs> excited when I saw the Google Play Store here on this device. And this is because Trading Zhenzhen always tries to give you nice service and they have installed the Play Store on there so that users don't have to do it. But anyhow, they have used the LC Play app and this app has been removed. So. Um, you cannot download the APK from the official website. You can download the APK from APK Mirror, but I think um, it is not working then because it has to download some data from some servers, but we'll check this out just in a second. Now, as you can see, the Google Play Store is on there and actually I can log in. I will quickly connect to Wi-Fi so we can check this out. And there we go. Oh my God, the keyboard is so damn horrible. That's the only bad thing always on China phones. If you um, use it for the first time, it has this strange keyboard which you have to change. So in order to do that, you go to system. Um, it's actually right now set to German. I will quickly switch this to English. So as you can see, even though it's a Chinese version, also with um, Chinese Android ROM, you can change it to any language you want to. So there are no restrictions regarding in the language. And now we have to switch um, the keyboard because by default, Huawei IME Chinese is installed and Yeah, um, we can actually try to find here the different language, but this is a little bit tricky though. All right guys, so I just found it. It's here in the language settings. You can switch on the English keyboard and then um, you can switch from the Chinese one to the English one. So let's see if this is working. And I will now check in into the Google Play Store. And yeah, as you can see, this is now English and you can slide here to switch the keyboards. So let me quickly log in. 
All right, folks, I'm now logged in. As you can see, Google services are actually active. So this is working. Um, software update, I won't do this right now. We'll try it in a second if it breaks the Google Play Store. Um, I quickly want to check out the Play Store before we're trying software updates. And yeah, there we go. Let's check out applications. And um, here we have the installed applications. And here are also some applications I've used in the past, like Telegram, as you can see, download pending. So this is working fine. We can also search, for instance, for WhatsApp. And there we go. Okay, Google Play Store crashed. Funny. WhatsApp app, and there we go. WhatsApp Messenger. So you can basically install all applications you want to Facebook. There are no restrictions and it works actually perfectly fine. The problem with that, however, is that it's using um, LC Play. Now, LC Play was actually a really nice solution to install the Google Apps without rooting the device, without unlocking the bootloader. Just as it is, download the APK and install it with one click. As you can see, lots of Chinese stuff, but it's basically working fine. It's installing everything on your device. However, this software was written by an unknown Chinese guy. Some people say it was a cooperation between Huawei and Google, which I don't think. But basically, it's using undocumented Huawei APIs, which are actually meant for device management, for enterprises, to push all the Google services onto your phone. While this is working fine, it's still a backdoor to your phone, and this is why this caused really bad press for Huawei. And then, um, yeah, LC Play was forced to shut down. Also, it's somehow, so far as I heard, it's breaking the CTS and the DRM, so the digital rights management. And Google is basically checking with DRM before you um, install an application if the app is actually genuine. If you bought the application, for instance, so it's basically something that is checking your applications. And this, if it's broken, could cause problems with some of the applications because then Google thinks you have stolen it, it's not a genuine app or something, but so far as I can see, most of the apps are downloading fine. There's also a so-called safety net checker, which we can download, and there we go, safety net, and here we can test if the device passes the safety net test. So we'll just do it in a second and see if there is now a, vulner, um, if there's now a problem with the device, and there we go. As you can see, it says here failed. Now, CTS profile match, just what I said before, is broken. So this is a problem. And this is also why it's not recommended to use the LC Play installer. I mean, the APK, you can still find it on the web. And so far as I can see, it's still trying to download something, but I'm not sure if the servers are online yet. Because it could, it could still be the problem that the servers are offline and it's not downloading all the applications. Oh, so far as you can see, it says here something in red. You have to try it for yourself. I'm not sure if you can rerun this, but here on this device, it was installed before they took it down. But I think right now um, they closed this, so you cannot do this anymore, but you really need to check this out. Anyhow, once you have the Play Store on your device, it's not recommended because there is a backdoor to your device, which causes security problems. But from my point of view, as you can see, it is working fine. We can also try now to do a system update and check if the Google services are still on there. And I'm really curious about that right now, actually. So there we go. As you can see, Huawei system update. And this update adds Huawei Link Turbo, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, let's just try it out. So guys, it's now doing the update here. It just rebooted. So this is a quick update. And I really hope that the Google services are still in place afterwards. Because if that is not working, then this is also a problem for everybody who has already installed it, because then you can never do system updates anymore. So I'm really curious about that, and let's check it out. So guys, the device has now um, updated, and as you can see, it says here is something about services, blah, 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 but the Google Play Store is still on there, and let's check out if it's still working, so yes. So if you have installed Google Play Store, no worries about the updates yet. If it's not a bigger system update, it doesn't override the Play Store. So that's pretty good though. So as you can see, the safety net test failed. And the safety net API is a part of Google Play Services framework. And some apps use this API to check whether your device has been rooted or not. And some apps refuse to work if your device is rooted. So when this series failed, you probably will have some compatibility issues with some applications. So this is some really crucial thing. But as you can see, most of the apps, like the usual apps, which you want to get, like Facebook or something, that is for sure working. So there is no problem with that. 
but still there's also a different way to get the applications and let's check out the Huawei app gallery just for a second what apps we can find there because they try to push developers to actually um, move to the app gallery to Huawei mobile services and put in their their applications but yeah for some reason this is loading pretty slow and the first time I've um, yeah, started it, as you can see it recommends me some applications, some Chinese applications from their partners to install it which is something well, we western people don't like so we'll tick everything off here and yeah we'll do an update later and as you can see there is TikTok in there so basically all the major Chinese applications you will find them in there but as soon as you try to look for, let's say, Facebook or something, there you go. As you can see, you cannot find it in there because, well, banned in China. And yeah, LinkedIn and some applications are in there, but most of the Western apps we're using here are not in there. So this will take a lot of time until developers will actually switch to the app gallery. I hope it takes place. Actually, I hope that the Trump drama finally stops and that, that Google gets back on the phone. But anyhow, um, for me, if I really want to use the phone, I would have to use a workaround, either use the Play Store, which is an unsafe method, which I wouldn't recommend, or just use a different app store. For instance, I can show you um, an app store, which is pretty cool, to be honest. So it's called AppToid, and all you have to do is, you have to go to Google or whatever, so you just open up your web browser, you go to Google or whatever search engine and you search for Aptoid APK. Basically Aptoid is an alternate um, app store where you can find tons of applications. As you can see it also has really a lot of downloads. And once you download an APK you can do this with every application. Also if you don't have the Play Store you can download the Facebook APK or whatever. Then as you can see it's downloading it right now in the background. And once this application has um, finished downloading, you will actually find it inside of your file manager. If you go to files, there you go, Aptoid APK. And um, as you can see, um, allow files to install applications. You have to allow this one here. And now Aptoid is installing. Um, this app has not undergone app gallery compatibility, blah, blah, blah. It's just saying that this here is not in the app gallery. You can install it anyway. That's no problem at all. And there we go. And here you have to grant a few permissions. So storage, and I don't think that you need the other permissions, but now it should be able to actually download applications. And there we go. So yes, agree, close window. And here is now your new app store. So this is um, yeah, a little bit smaller than the Play Store, but they still have many applications. Let's say if I want to download Facebook here, and there we go, Facebook. As you can see, I can find it in here, go there, and you're even able to update applications which are already on your phone. But the problem with that, however, is that Aptoid needs to make money somehow, and they are doing that by playing ads and this is a little bit annoying. Anyhow, um, you can find all your apps here, which you have on your phone. It also scans your phone for your current applications, and you can also update the applications here directly from Aptoid. It's a little bit more complicated than on the Play Store, but anyhow, um, this is working fine to at least get all the Western apps you like and still keep your device safe. Um, yeah, I'm really actually sad that LC Play has been taken down, but you know, it's opening up a backdoor to your phone, which is something um, that shouldn't be there. And for security reasons, um, guys, if you have it installed, well, it's your decision if you want to leave it or uninstall it and use, for instance, Aptoid or install the APKs manually. But there are many ways to get applications on the smartphone. So even though there is no Play Store on the device, no Google services, it's still actually a good phone, which I really like. And yeah, but the only problem is I work on YouTube. I really need all the Google services. Um, I also use Google Pay a lot. And yeah, it's really hard without the Google services for me to use it as a daily driver. But still, I really want the phone. So I'll probably keep it here um, with this solution, even though it's not 100% um, safe. But as you can see, I can also download here Gmail, I can download Google Pay and that is working super fine on the device here. Anyway, it's a really cool device. The camera is absolutely amazing. There will be a camera review very soon on my channel, so make sure to check it out. 
All in all, well, as you can see, it is running Android 10 based on, um, it's running EMUI 10 actually based on Android 10, so it's their own skin. But yeah, this is not the fully licensed Google version, so you're missing the Google Play services on there. But I've shown you today some solutions, how to get them, even though this solution is not working anymore. Um, but for applications, you can switch to a different installer, which is absolutely safe, but a little bit annoying and a little bit more complicated than um, the Google Play Store, which was actually super convenient. All right, guys, I really hope that you liked this video so far. There will be now some test videos, battery tests, um, camera test, comparisons with the Pro when I get it next week. And yeah, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this little update. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day. Bye.